Hey guys, Halloween Dan here, and today I'm doing my first home build of the season. This time I'm making these really cool Halloween lanterns, which I made just using bits of leftover rubbish that was about to go into the bin. And I'm going to show you how easy they are to make. Using nothing more than a few bits of tissue paper and glue and two empty bottles that were ready to go into the bin. I've managed to make these cool looking Halloween lanterns, one in the style of a ghost, the other in the style of a creepy looking kind of poisoned apple skull. And I hope you agree, they're looking rather spooky. So if you are interested in making something like this and think that you could, stay tuned where I'll show you exactly how I did it. So today I'm going to show you how to take these simple household items, most of them getting ready for recycling, and turn them into something spooky and fun for Halloween. As you can see, we've got a right array here for everything from toilet paper, but the two most important features are the Coke bottle in the middle, the empty little detergent bottle, and we've got glue. The glue that I'm using is what they call D4 waterproof PVA glue. To be honest, any PVA form of glue can be used for this. PVA though is a really good kind of glue. It's really good for molding and using to make things. It's just a really good sort of glue for this kind of a project. So if you can get your hands on anything that is PVA related, it will be best. So let's see how we get on. So here we are now guys, I've chopped the top off the bottle, which was actually a lot harder to do than I thought. The plastic at the top's quite thick, so be careful when you're doing that. I actually removed more than I thought I was gonna remove, which is why the top is all masking taped up. Just Cause I wanna try and keep this sort of domed shaped look as best as I can. But if I'm honest with you, because this is gonna be like more like a creepy lantern look, it doesn't matter overly exactly how crusty or rubbish this looks because it kind of adds to the effect. You can see as well, I've chopped the bottom off the bottle and what I've made here is base, a very basic piece of a cardboard disc um, with a cardboard outer edge. Again, quite rough and ready. I painted it black and when that fits on there, it fits very, very tight, very, very snug. And that just acts as a base for a little fake tea light. Paint wise, I'm gonna be using mainly enamel paint. Uh, I just find that enamel paint has a better finish and it kind of seems more resilient to weather and all kinds of things. Not that I'm planning on keeping this out in all weathers, it's just that it might help them a little bit. I will also be using some acrylic paints and if acrylic paints are what you've got to hand, it will work perfectly well with this as well. I've now mixed up um, a sort of rough mixture, about one part of the PVA glue to about two parts water. And now I will use, in my case, I'm using toilet tissue. Uh, you can use any sort of tissue or kitchen towel or anything you might have to hand because it kind of has the same effect. I just like using toilet tissue because it's not too thick and you can sort of mold it a little bit better. Here I'm drawing a really rudimentary skull sort of a shape. It's basically just an outline, a guide for me to run along um, so I kind of know the pattern I'm following. I'm drawing like a kind of a weird melted lopsided skull um, which is going to have sort of drippy effect teeth just because I kind of want to go for this kind of dripping, sort of poisoned, snow white poisoned apple kind of a look is what I'm kind of going for. And what I'll do to achieve this once I've drawn this guide is I'll use wads of glue and water soaked toilet paper, toilet tissue, to follow these, this very rough guide that I'm drawing now. Um, and then I'll fill in all the gaps to give it this sort of drippy effect and hopefully it should look really good. So using the toilet tissue and the glue, I have created this monstrosity. Uh, as you can see, I've created a kind of a drippy skull, which I based this design loosely upon 
the poisoned apple from Snow White where you know where the witch pulls the poisoned apple out of the poison and it drips into the shape of a skull um, clearly denoting poison so I've gone for that kind of design it's a very loose kind of skull one eye bigger than the other a kind of weird nose gap and then the teeth are kind of the drips of the drips of slimy sludgy whatever it is and I've gone all the way around the back the ones at the back are slightly bigger and then I also decided to do a row of them around the bottom which you could or couldn't do or you could make the lantern slightly smaller than this if you so wished I think once it's dry and painted it will look really really good but this is going to take quite a while to dry I might put it outside to dry actually give it try and speed the process up a little bit and also to know even though this is quite a watery mixture of glue, this glue sets rock hard, really, really hard, which is why it's good to use it when you're doing this kind of stuff. Here at the bottom, it will set, and then I will probably have to cut it away from this mat that I use for all my little projects. Be a bit careful when, that, when we get to that stage, but I will show you when we are at our next stage. While my little sort of skull poison apple lantern dries, I had this other bottle, smaller bottle, which I thought I would do something with as well. I've basically done exactly the same thing. I've sliced the bottom off. There it is. Uh, I've sliced the top off. There that is. That's hard as well. And basically, I've kind of cut some notches into the bottom. Very basic. Cut one of the notches out completely. I won't, it's hard, quite hard to do, but it basically sits over itself. And it's just, again, enough room for a little tea light to sort of sit in there and light it up. And I'm kind of thinking ghost vibes with this one. So I think I'm going to completely cover this one and see how it ends up looking. Let's see. And there we have him. He didn't take very long at all. It's literally a case of covering the bottle with a few layers of tissue paper, covered in the mixture that we've already mixed, and then ripping some holes, which you can clearly see I did. I basically got the end of the paintbrush and tore some holes into the paper and then sort of molded them into a more sort of eye looking shape and a slight mouth. I didn't know whether I was gonna add a mouth, if I'm honest. I think he kind of looks a bit creepy now with the mouth. <laughs> But then again, I, I guess I'm kind of going for creepy ghost. He's a very short ghost, but I wanted him obviously to be a lantern. So, so I want him to be able. To, I want you to be able to see the light that I'm going to put inside. So he kind of had to have a mouth, I thought. So a full 24 hours after I made these yesterday, this one, this little git, is still wet. It's still wet at the bottom. It's drying a bit, but they're still, you can move them still because they are still wet. They haven't stuck to the plastic. The top is pretty rock hard now. It's still not completely dry. This little guy though, he's dry. He is completely dry. Um, you'll notice I've added these little sort of ripped bits of paper along the bottom too, because I just wanted to look a little bit more like a ghost and less like a kind of creepy face. Um, so, so yeah, I might give him a little paint first while this one gets its act together. So we've jumped ahead a few stages here. I've basically finished, to be quite honest with you. I finished the ghost first. First of all, I painted him white, completely white. Uh, and then I sort of added a, sort of a little bit of gray just to give him a little bit of spooky definition, make him look a bit messed up. Um, I had to give him black eyeliner and black lipstick because I just thought, you know, that'll make him, give him a bit of edge. Uh, and then I basically took some garden wire and I very rudimentally bent it over, put some holes in the top, and there you go. And you've got a very basic little handle. I could have probably made it sit more central because now he kind of leans forward a little bit. But actually when the candle's in the bottom, he leans forward pretty, he, he leans the right way pretty well. This guy I only finished last night. You can see in the light, I've added a few layers of green. What I actually did with this one was he took ages and ages and ages to dry. So top tip, next time, make it less watery. More glue to water ratio. I would probably say half and half, actually. Really would have been better if it had been more glue because particularly the bottom part here took absolutely ages to dry. But anyway, once it finally did dry, what I then did was I flipped him upside down and I poured 
glue, the same glue, the PVA glue, around the rim. And then also I poured it so that it slowly ran down the inside of the old Coke bottle. And then once that dries, like I've already said, this glue dries perfectly crystal clear. Uh, well, more or less. So then, apart from anything, the bottle itself, the plastic isn't very good to paint on. The paint doesn't really like to stick to this plastic. But it will stick to the glue quite happily. So I then just painted where the, where the glue had dried on the inside of the bottle, which also kind of covered the inner part of of this so you didn't when you look through it you don't see white anymore you just see green I think the drips and themselves look kind of cool then I also once once that had dried and the green had dried on the outside of the bottle you can kind of see it kind of looks like I don't know kind of looks a bit stained that's glue as well so basically what I did was I then poured the same glue all over the clear part of the outside of the bottle uh, and then using a paintbrush I just completely covered it and you can see what kind of happens is the glue didn't really want to stick to every single part of it it kind of wants to separate out a little bit but I quite like that effect you get this kind of almost slightly opaque kind of mottled watery looking effect which kind of goes with this kind of oozing dripping look that i was kind of trying to go for uh, i did it in the eyes and in the nose hole as well and let that dry it dried pretty much clear and then i painted it so the paints i showed you before i used plastico uh, fast dry project enamel i use it a lot but for lots of different things. It's great for these sorts of projects. It dries pretty quick, to be quite honest with you, even on what is essentially toilet tissue. The green really makes it pop. I might add some extra finishing just to give it an extra layer of detail, maybe a little bit of black, possibly to pick up some of the areas, maybe um, to give him a bit of a jawline. But I'm quite happy with the way he looks as it is. And yeah, I just, so I just painted him in this garden green uh, and then I mixed that with some white and some yellow uh, to create this slightly lighter green to sort of add a bit of detail around the eyes and along these drips, a little bit on the top as well, just to give it a little bit of depth. In daylight, he, I think he looks even better. I think he looks really cool. And I've not tried him with the lights in yet, I'm gonna do that tonight, but I think, I think it's gonna look really good. So guys, I'm really pleased with how these have turned out. Just for a little extra bit of interest, I did add, you can see, a little bit of garden wire to the top of this lantern. And I did add a slightly darker bit of paint as well, both to the top and around some of the detail parts, around the eyes and down some of the drips of slime. So, but I'm really, really pleased with how this guy's turned out. He's great, he can hang him from a tree or hang him from a branch, and but you can just stand him up too, so he's kind of good too. The ghost, not so good at standing, he is better hung, but yeah, he's still really kind of cool and I'm really pleased with how they both turned out. And the great thing about this is they're, st they're really easy to do. It's literally tissue paper and glue and water. You can make these any size. I could have made this shorter, I could have made this taller. I could have painted this white as a sort of a skeleton type of one. I could have gone red and had it a bit kind of bloody and gory. I've got a square bottle which I'm tempted to kind of make into a kind of a Frankenstein's head maybe. I think that would be kind of cool. The options are limitless. They're only limited by your imagination. So yeah, I hope you guys found this fun to watch and maybe managed to make one of your own. If you did, please leave a comment in the comment section about it and maybe even a picture if you can. Send it to me on my Instagram, I'd love to see them. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. So thanks for watching guys. See you in the next one. Keep it spooky. Bye.